Faith Church, from my house to your house, it's uh, Monday, November 9th, and I hope you are well. We had a fantastic class uh, with Jim Edwards the uh, between the swastika and the sickle. If you had a chance to, to go to that, you know what I'm talking about. If not, those recordings are on the on our, our webpage. But last night in the last session, um, Dr. Edwards talked about how uh, the job of the church is not to transform society. In fact, that's we're, it's not possible for us to do that, but the job of the church is to simply proclaim the gospel, to be the light of Christ in the world. And um, that's so different from the narrative that I think that we hear a lot of times in our society um, from the church, that you know the church's job is to go out and to transform everything, um, politically, socially, and everything else. And, and certainly, you know, I think God wants to use us towards that end, but but really, I, I appreciate him bringing us back to the to the heart of it, and you're reminded of that if if you're reading with us right now in um, through the daily readings, we're in Paul's letter to uh, first letter to the Corinthians, um, chapter two is what we we read today, and um, Paul uh, <clears throat> says this in the beginning of that chapter. He says, "When I came to you, brothers, remember this is a letter he's writing to a, to an actual church in Corinth." I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come with eloquence or superior wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God, for I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And Paul just really boils it down that he, what he's coming to proclaim um, and share with them is Christ and Christ crucified. That's it, the focus of, of the ministry um, of the church. It's a great reminder for me uh, as a pastor, as a follower of Jesus, but particularly as a pastor, that what I what I offer, have to offer to proclaim is Christ. And if I don't have Christ to offer, I really have nothing. Um, I uh, have come to grips over the years that I can't change people. I spent, some of you know, I spent 15 years in youth ministry working with mostly high school and junior high students. And I love that work. And I, I must have had the chance to to share the gospel with hundreds, if not thousands, of uh, of young people over the course of those years. And uh, I can just tell you from experience that I, 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 it was not up to me whether they received it or not. Um, I could preach and share and love on love on these kids as much as I want, but in the end, I, I did not have the power to reach inside their heart and their mind and have and and see them conformed and converted, if you will, to, to trusting in Christ. The power was beyond me. All I could do is proclaim, and the rest was uh, really in God's hands. It's only um, by the Spirit. And Paul goes on in this in this chapter, if you've read it today, in verses 11 to 12. He says, uh, For who among us knows the thoughts of a man except the man's spirit within him? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. We have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we may understand what God has freely given us. This is what we speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in words taught by the spirit. Uh, such a great reminder that any truth we have about God, about even ourselves really, uh, comes from the spirit who reveals that to us. Um, you know, the, Jesus often talked about a blindness that people have, and the scriptures talk about that, and we are, and apart from from God's spirit coming into our lives, we, we can't know or see the truth. Um, and that humbles us, that humbles us as teachers, as a, whether you're a teacher as a pastor, or a teacher as a parent, or as a mentor, uh, trying to help people understand the truth about God. Um, we are dependent upon the Holy Spirit to do that work. We can be as creative and passionate, as articulate, and do our homework as best we can, but in the end, all we can do is proclaim it's up to God. But it also humbles us as believers that that if I'm someone who recognizes the truth about who Christ is, that that's not because I'm smarter than other people it's, it's, or, or better than other people in any way. It's simply because the, the Spirit of God has revealed that to me, and I'm in great debt to that. And so that, that reality uh, humbles us and makes us say, thank, thank you, Lord, that you would reveal yourself to me, that you would open my mind. And we as a church ought to continue to pray for illumination, if you will, asking God to, by his spirit, to reveal himself to us, but also to others as we proclaim the message of Christ and him crucified to the world, that, that he would open the hearts of people to come and believe and to trust and find salvation in him. Um, 
So let us, let's keep preaching Christ and Christ crucified. I want to uh, lastly just invite you tomorrow morning, uh, Tuesday morning, we will gather online for prayer. This is called, we're calling this a gathering for prayer. We're, I'm doing this, uh, leading this from now to the end of the year at least. We've had a great group of people coming on. Um, the link is on the email here and we're praying from 7.30 to 8. We're going to pray through Psalm 23 tomorrow, probably the most beloved psalm that there is. And let let God's word there guide us in our prayers. Love to have you you join us if you're able. Um, in the meantime, peace to you. And, and I trust that wherever you are, you, you um, are resting in the love of God as your Father, in the grace and peace of Christ, your Savior, and in the unity of the, of the Spirit that we share. Peace.